We've been looking at Psalm 110 for four days now, uh, last week. We're going to pick up on one more, one more aspect of Psalm 110 uh, before we move on to another psalm, because this is so important. This psalm is so full, so packed, uh, and so important to uh, the understanding of our salvation, the understanding of who Christ is, and the understanding of his plan. And that's where we're at today. We've looked already now at, at who he is. He is the uh, king of glory. He sits down at the right hand of the Father when his work on earth was done. Uh, but one day he's going to come off that throne, and he's going to come down, and it says in verse 1, and he's going to make his enemies his footstools. In ancient times, when a monarch was defeated by another monarch, uh, that one who was defeated came to that other king, bowed before him, and that king put his feet on his back, symbolic of him being a footstool, having been defeated and humiliated. So that's going to happen to the, pre, to the enemies of the Lord Jesus. Now we left that issue and we went on to talk about him being at the right hand of the Father. And then in verse 4, at the, as being at the, uh, the great high priest after the order of Melchizedek. But that's only his identity. That's who he is. He is both our king and our priest. And that's another reason Jesus had to be uh, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You remember in Genesis 14, he was Melchizedek was both a priest and a king. And Jesus is both a king and a priest for us. But there's one more issue that's found in Psalm 110. It's not as popular or easily to read, but it's his plan for the future. And it begins in that verse 1 when it talks about making his enemies his footstools. But he, he moves on to talk about what he is going to do, first of all with his enemies, and then what he's going to do for his followers. We start with his enemies in verse, uh, verse we're, going to, we're going to drop down to verse 5 for that. The Lord is at, that, at your right hand. He will shatter kings in the day of his wrath. He will judge among the nations. He will fill them with corpses. He will shatter the chief men over a broad country. This is a picture then of the Lord coming in, in victory, in justice, in vengeance against those who have rejected him, those who have been his enemies, those who have opposed him. So when verse 1 says, your enemies will be made a footstool for your feet, he is talking about those who oppose him, and the day comes when he will shatter them, he will come in complete and total victory over them. That is his enemies. Uh, we think of, of going back again to Hebrews for just a moment. Hebrews that talks so much about the King Jesus and the priesthood of Melchizedek that Jesus would pick up. Uh, but it also talks about him coming in victory and shattering the enemy. I would just point your attention to, to Hebrews 10, uh, verse 30 and 31. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So Hebrews, this is not, is not a direct quote from Psalm 110, but it does pick up on the theme that he will one day shatter and defeat and destroy those who oppose him. So Psalm 110 talks about that. Hebrew uh, applies that. Well, going back to our passage, what about those who follow him? What is God's plan for them? We drop back to verse 3 this time for that. Your people will volunteer freely in the day of your power, in holy array from the womb of the dawn. Your youth are to you as the dew. Now this is not an easy verse to translate and understand, but we do get the picture that there is something wonderful and joyful awaiting God's people. In verse 7, he says, He will drink from the brook by the wayside, Therefore, he lift up his head. And so peace is coming for the people of God. That's the second part, the followers of the Lord. Now, if we go once again to, to uh, Hebrews and verse 10, chapter 10, once again, we see the application of much of this when he talks about verse 22. He says uh, concerning us in verse 21, let's start with that. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, our body washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. 
And so he's giving a, a promise to those who draw near to him because Christ is our great high priest. And then in verse 24 and 25, there's this application for us as the people of God among the people of God. He says this, let us consider, verse 24, how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so he's saying, look, all this truth that stems from Psalm 110 and is fleshed out and understood better in the book of Hebrews and in other places, all this wonderful truth is ours because we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, we are to come together as God's people to remind one another of these great truths and to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, to encourage one another in the things of Christ. And so this is a great verse for the church of, God, of Christ. Uh, we can't do these things separated from one another. We come together to rejoice and to rehearse all the great wonderful things that our Lord, our King, and our great high priest has done for us and plans yet to do for us. These are wonderful truths, and I trust our study of Psalm 110 has given you a wonderful day of the Lord, day by day by day. We'll see you tomorrow.